Okay, so today is Monday the 24th of September. I am quitting smoking, quite simply. Um, and I have been cutting down since the end of last week and over the weekend. I'm not forcing it. This time it literally just feels like I'm ready to quit. I'm ready to stop smoking. Um, I started using my e-cigarette again. And I'm using this 99% of the time now. Today is Tuesday the 25th of September. Um... Yesterday was my first whole day without a single cigarette. Not even intentional, because I thought to myself, you know, if I need one, I'll have one. But I didn't need one. And I managed perfectly fine without them. And it's gone five o'clock today already. So, yeah. I'd say they're definitely on the way out. I don't even feel like I want one. This is weird, but good. Okay, today is Sunday the 7th of October, and day 14 without cigarettes. Wow. Uh, two whole weeks. That's made me really happy. Today is October 18th, and day 25 without cigarettes. <clears throat> today is what I would have called a trigger day. A day that would have made me want to start smoking again, or at least want a cigarette. Because um, I had to go to the dentist. And I'm terrified of the dentist. But I didn't smoke and I didn't even want to smoke, which is brilliant. Okay, today is March 20th. Um, the weather got warmer and the dumb people start coming out like ants. Um, I'm not even kidding. I just had a comment on one of my videos that said, You're still consuming nicotine. Wait, I am? These contain nicotine? No! Come on, are you serious right now? <laughs> yes, e-cigarettes contain nicotine, but they're still around 90% safer than smoking actual cigarettes. Thank you very much. And like someone on my Twitter just pointed out, it depends how much nicotine you're actually consuming, which in my case is not very much. Oh my gosh. Dumb people. Okay, today is Saturday the 23rd of March. <clears throat> and as of today, I am six months smoke free. I'm happy. I'm so happy. This is the furthest I've ever made it. And as you probably got from that previous clip, I wouldn't have made it this far without this. Um, I have needed this. Um, I'm one year smoke free today. I'm not going to lie, the past year hasn't been smooth sailing. It hasn't been easy. But I'm, I did it. I quit smoking and I stayed off them. There have been several moments over the past year um, with several triggers that would normally make me go back to smoking. The highs and lows <sighs> since I quit, the lows especially have just been, but I didn't go back to smoking. I've had times on other quit other occasions with quitting where I've become so stressed out that the only thing I can think about is having a cigarette. The only thing I want is a cigarette and the only thing that solved it was a cigarette. <clears throat> And that hasn't happened this time round. This time round, like I said, like I just said, I quit smoking and I stayed off them. And I am so incredibly proud of myself. Like I said a year ago today, this time felt right. This time it feels natural, like I was ready to quit smoking and I just did it. Year and a half smoke free. <sighs> kind of a big deal. I feel fantastic. Haven't gone back to smoking. Very happy with myself.
Today is September 24th, welcome to my video and I am officially two years smoke free. Two! I did it! I'm so happy. Um, still not smoking, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this video or it would have a completely different, different title if I did. Um, what else? Still using my e-cigarette. I have to, it's come in so handy, especially during the last six months. I'm not gonna lie, I've wanted to go back to smoking, I've wanted to go back to doing a lot of stupid shit that I used to do, like drinking. Um, but I haven't done that either, because I'm not gonna put my health at risk like that, and I'm not gonna do that to my loved ones. Um, to my family, they don't deserve that, they don't deserve to be put back through that, so why should I do it? That would be incredibly selfish of me, and stupid. And I'm not selfish or stupid. Um, the past six months have been a roller coaster. Um, I had so much trouble finding my feet and figuring out what the new normal was for me. Um, for us, the new normal for my mum is she doesn't leave the house. She's left the house once since March, and that was to go and get her eye test done. The new normal for me is just leaving for essential trips only. Vet trips, eye test, mine was a fucking nightmare. I was told to remove my mask. I felt incredibly uncomfortable doing so, but she kept insisting, remove your mask, remove your, remove your mask. Remove your mask or you're going to fog up my lenses. So I eventually did it, but I felt so uncomfortable doing it. And the next day I had like a really croaky chest, really bad cough. And I thought, oh God, I've been exposed to it. Um, and with my anxiety, it really triggered me. And that was another trigger point for wanting to go back to doing stupid shit. Um, because, you know, I didn't know if I had it or not. I didn't know if if I was going to suddenly get sick or not. Um, and it's been handled now. I contacted the company um, head office. They dealt with it after taking more details from me and after speaking to the woman that told me to remove my mask. Um, and she's been fired. Good. Sorry. You put me at risk. You've put, I don't even know how many other people at risk. I don't know if the person before me had the virus or not. I don't know if they breathed on your machine and you didn't clean it properly or not and I was exposed to it. That's a very scary prospect. The person after me didn't know if I had it or not and they were probably told to remove their mask too. It's not acceptable. We're in a pandemic. Like, no. Anyway, rant on that over. She's dealt with. Um, but yeah, it's leaving for essential trips only. It's figuring, figuring out what the new normal is for you is how you're going to avoid going back to old habits, bad habits, how you're going to avoid slipping um and for me it was you know right can't do this anymore but i can do this can't do this anymore but i can do this taking a break from <laughs> it's gonna sound awful taking a break from people you live with is extremely helpful because you spend too much time together you get on each other's nerves you need to take a break go to a separate room do something that makes you happy watch something on your computer listen to music Dance. Dance around your room if you have to. Do whatever it takes to lessen the stress at home, especially since you're spending more time there. I know a lot of people are going back to work right now and school and for them that's taking away the mindset that we're in a pandemic. I'm, I'm seeing that. Um, no, we're still in a pandemic. You still can't do a lot of shit. You know, don't feel pressured to have people over to meet up with people who are more exposed now, who haven't necessarily been following all the rules. You know, it shouldn't, and I've learned this the hard way, it shouldn't make you feel bad if they're sad that they can't come see you because you're protecting yourself, because you're protecting the people you live with. I'm not gonna put myself at risk to save hurting someone else's feelings that's not going to happen um and again when it comes back to trigger points for going back to old habits that was one for me recently um as recently as a couple weeks ago a few weeks ago end of august um i felt like i'd hurt someone's feelings and i felt really bad for it and really guilty and that made me want to go back to doing stupid shit again because the stress, the anxiety that I felt from telling this person no was unbelievable. I felt so guilty. Um, and it took me a while to realise that I'm not responsible 
for you getting upset just because I said no. It's okay to say no. It's okay to tell people no. It's not okay, you know, for me to feel like I want to go do stupid shit because I feel bad about upsetting you. It, it's not. Anyway, um, finding your feet with this new normal is really how you're going to avoid slipping back into old habits. Um, I found that that was really important, even though it took me a while to figure that out. If you're watching this and you're quitting anything, please just know that you can do it and surround yourself with a good support system. Even if it's just by phone, or by text or by video call, those are the people that will get you through it. Those are the people that will support you. Those are the people that you can turn to when you feel like going back to it. Like my husband, I've said to him several times, I want to drink or I want to smoke. And he's the first one that will tell me, no, you're not. And even if you do want to, you're not going to, I'm not going to let you. And I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for that level of support and his belief in me has meant so much. Um... Don't think that there's no one for you to talk to. Please don't try and do this by yourself. If you truly believe you can, that's great. But I tried going it alone when I quit drinking January 1st, 2016, and it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do because I didn't tell anyone. I didn't tell anyone what I was dealing with. I didn't tell anyone I was drinking. I didn't tell anyone that I was quitting drinking. It, I did it by myself. And it was so difficult not having anyone to turn to for support or help or guidance or just advice or just just someone to be there when I felt like breaking down and I felt like going back. That was my biggest mistake with that. And yeah, I stuck to it because I knew how important it was. But <clears throat> I could have done with the support and I should have spoken up. Don't feel like it's something to be ashamed of either. If you have a problem and you're trying to get help, that's nothing to be ashamed of. Nothing to be ashamed of at all. Just don't keep going the way you're going if you know in the back of your head, if you've got a voice saying, this is going to ruin your life. This is going to ruin your health. This is so bad for you. Just don't do it. Just quit. The one thing I say more than anything is quit for you. Quit for you. That started when I quit smoking um because i was quitting for the wrong reasons before i was quitting for this person or for this person or for my family and yeah i say i'm not going to go back to it now because i don't want to put them through it that's all true but at the time when i was quitting for them it didn't work and i felt like a bigger failure when i slipped and when i went back to it um because keep in mind this is like my third or fourth attempt at quitting smoking and it's my most successful one because i did it for me I did it for me, so I would be okay, for, so my health would be okay. And when you slip, if you're quitting for the sake of somebody else, when you slip, you feel like a bigger failure, you feel like you've let them down, that you failed them, and that guilt weighs really heavy on you. So don't quit for anyone else, quit for you. Do it for yourself. And that's it, that's all I have to say. Uh, thank you for watching my video. I... Like I said at the beginning, I'm officially two years smoke free now and I am very happy. My health is so much better. Like, it's unbelievable. My lungs are clear. I, I've said it in other videos. I can go up the stairs without getting out of breath now. I couldn't do that when I was smoking 20 or more a day. It's amazing. It's amazing what quitting smoking will do for you. Um, and I'm so happy. Like I said, I keep saying it. I'm happy. Two years smoke free. And I will see you in my next video, which I believe, unless nothing else happens, um, will be two and a half years.